Bucks until late, did you ever really feel like you had that game well and truly on your terms? Yeah, we felt like we were able to set it up the way that we wanted to and you know, we had a bit of time from our last game and, and we really haven't liked our um, last month, to be honest. We, we just needed to get back to closer to the brand that, that we want to execute and the first half today was definitely that. There was still elements in the second half that we can improve on but you're not going to take you know, that those great strides in one in one step so it was a step in the right direction it was a positive um, outcome for us but more, more so the way that we went about it How far off do you think you are from hitting those strides? I don't know we, we, we've never really sort of set um, limits on it um, and we think that we've played we've played some good footy this year but it just hasn't been as consistent uh, it hasn't been as um um, we've probably relied on the, what the opposition are doing, and even tonight at times in the second half, you know, Melbourne had quite a few shots on goal, and um, and the margin didn't reduce as much as it might have um, early in that first in that last quarter. So we, we've still got a way to go. It's a tough comp, but regardless of whether we're comparing ourselves against anyone else, if we compare ourselves against where we think we should be, we've we've still got some work to do. What was better tonight for you? The, the, the defence and the way you moved, you, you held up behind there, Darcy was exceptional. Yeah. Or the fact that you had the spread of goal kickers without the, the one guy or the big guys? I think largely we were just in better shape defensively. We, we sort of just looked like we, we were able to control the game with our, just the shape, the shape of our, um, of our defence mainly. Um, well, we, were, we were smacked at clearance. Yeah, Max Gorn was was um, was a really strong factor in that, but most of their midfielders had you had big games. Um, yeah, Broads Broads had his moments late and really fought through, um, but we you know, we were largely coming off the back foot. You know, minus seventeen clearance, minus thirty contested ball. So we must have been doing something right in transition to be able to control the game for as long as we did. Is that a positive that you win despite those sort of numbers? Or yeah. do you look at that as a concern? That No, that's a bit of an outlier for us. Um, if we played again, sort of in, you know, if we played again next week, you'd like to think that you, we'd, we could handle that better. Um, but, yeah, it is, it's a real positive to how we were able to set the ground up and, and defend, you know, especially centre bounce. I mean, at centre bounce, we, we look like, you know, I don't know exactly what the numbers were, but we got smacked there as well. And still were able to kick two two going our way, and um, and kept the Melbourne at three points going the other way. I think three or four points. So I thought our back six defended man on man really well for the majority of the night when they were forced to, but also played their role you know pretty well to to get the out number at times when the ball was in their front half. Major Jaden Stevenson's gone today. Obviously kick three probably could have yeah. had a couple, but had a, was a real live wire up four foot. Yeah, and he's going to continue to. Um, you know, he's only a young player he's, and he's, there's high expectations about him and, and he has high expectations on himself. But, you know, he, um, in space he looks dangerous. His, his pressure game is, is fine in another level, as we saw by that last tackle and then the, then the pass off to, to Mason. But, um, you know, he's, he's got some, some elite traits that he's still working out exactly how to uh, maximise in this, at this level. So, you know, his progress has been really strong for us. He's, he's diligent. He, he's, um, as I said, he's hard on himself, but he, he wants to um, wants to learn, and he's got an open mind, and his, his work rate's pretty strong. So he's he's gonna he's gonna take some defending, and he's gonna keep can continue to take his steps as as a young footballer as he as he gets more games under his belt. Touched on it before, but how did you assess that rock battle? <laughs> Um, Brody will hate me saying this, but he was um, yeah, he was under the weather physically tonight and did a really good job to get up. Uh, it wasn't his ankle; it was he just a, he had a really sore neck, and, it, and it, yeah, he did for a long part of the week. He he might not have played, um, so he was able to push through that. Um, and now I think about it, he'll hate he'll hate that a lot, like <laughs> a lot. Um, but you know. Max was huge, not just in not just in clearance, but around the ground, and 
Um, I thought Brodie really stuck at it because, in particular, that five minutes just before three quarter time when when Brodie really stood up and it gave us capacity to, to get a couple of goals on the board, which was good for breathing space. What did you think of the um, mark not paid to Jeremy Howe for the studs up? Um, I suppose yeah. technically it could be a part of the, it, could be interpreted that way, but I don't. I think technically it's in the rule book now, isn't it? Yeah. Mm. Is it? Do you think it was the way it was to be applied, as to springing to get the mark, or <laughs> as protecting space? Out? Yeah. Oh, look, I. We're 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 really good at finding like the the one thing that the rule book doesn't seem to cater for. Like we just we, we just seem to want to find that that one contest that doesn't quite get catered for. Um, well, of course, I wanted him, the mark to be paid. <laughs> <laughs> I wanted the mark to be paid, but to the letter of the law, I could understand why it was why, why it was a free against. Mason Cox, what did you make of his game? Obviously, you chose to bring him in over Reed. Yeah. Did oh, look, I thought Mason had had moments. Um, yeah, actually, we needed to use him in the ruck a little more through that sort of early stages when we just needed to try and sort of buffer the dominance um, at those early stages, but. Um, he'll be better for the run. Yeah, Reedy was very good going back yesterday, and his attitude's been huge. So, you know, we're we're far from a settled 22. And we don't know what our best 22 is. We're we're still exploring and still looking for for better and um, and for best. So the our, our players understand that you know that they're going to give everything of, of themselves to to prove that they're in it. So the line obviously functions well with all the smalls in there as well. But is there any scenario where Reed plays alongside Cox, is that just not... Yeah, well, there is. There is. Absolutely there is. I'm, I'm not going to say that we won't... That I won't sort of take any of our options off the table. We've always got those options. Um, yeah, we've got a... You know, Jamie Elliott, hopefully second half of the year, Taylor Adams. Um, yeah, there's a few boys that, that are going to have claims in that mid-forward area. So that probably has as much to say on our tall, small balance as anything else. So we, at the same time, if um, if we need to go to it or we think that it suits a particular opposition, we we wouldn't hesitate having the three. But it's not been done yet, so I can't say that it's something that we know that works or or um, or that we would shy away from. The likelihood is that we, we wouldn't. But I'm not taken off the table. How likely are Adams and Elliot for the Western Bulldogs game? Oh, look, yeah, don't know. Like they're both training really well. They've had you know two or three weeks where they've where they've got some some pretty good load in. So and they're both looking forward to playing. They'll be pushing the docks pretty hard, but, and and mo- and both of them are training through you know our break. So you know with the intent of, of putting the hand up. You started Geordie on the ball. How much do you balance when when you use him on the ball? Is it his body and and managing that through games and his fitness, or is it what works best for? Oh, sometimes it's a bit of a gut feel. Like this, this particular game last year, he had 20 touches as a mid in the first half and really set us up, and you know, kicking goals out of the out of midfield as well. So this is only his second game back this time around. Uh, we know that we can we can use him in there, and when he's when he's going well, we sort of. If, we've, if he's feeling it and we're feeling it, we, we, we run it for a little bit longer. We've got that capacity. But we know how damaging he is when he gets in front of the ball as well. So it's a, it's a good problem to have. Thank you. Cheers. Thanks, guys.